Hey guys, well, welcome to Tam Talks, a place for real and honest conversation. Now you may be watching us on our YouTube channel or you might be listening to us on our podcast, but today it's my honor to have Melody in the studio with me. You know, I know your parents just prophesied over you with that name, right? Totally. Your father is in the uh, music industry mm -hmm. and you were raised in the music industry and mm -hmm. you were known as Melody Hernandez to me when we hired mm -hmm. you here at Influence Church. And of course, Melody Noel is your stage name, mm -hmm. correct? Um, but you are now married. Mm -hmm. You are expecting your first child. Yes. So welcome, first of all, to the studio. <laughs> Thank you. And you know, Melody, what I'm doing right now is just, um, we're walking through my new book, Fasting for Miracles, mm -hmm. and it's a 21-day journey mm -hmm. of looking at the miracles in the Bible yeah. and fasting passages and really believing God for miracles in our life. And so I wanted you to come and to share a little bit about today's miracle story, which is one that we all know, and that was, you know, these walls falling down. Yeah. But I want to take a moment first, just let you and I dialogue, because it's a place for real and honest conversation. <laughs> do you think people believe in miracles today? Um, I do. I don't think it's common. I mm -hmm. think there's probably more doubt today than, you know, before. But I do think that there are people who still contend and believe for miracles. And you know, maybe we live in a society where we don't press in for miracles because we're so self-sufficient. Right. Especially in America. You know, I've traveled around the world. I've done mission trips around the world. And if you're in a third world poverty stricken environment where all you have are miracles, right. you see miracles. Totally. Um, but we don't either ask for them or we don't think we need them. Or maybe we don't think there's a God big enough to answer our miracles. Totally. But um, you're carrying a miracle, you <laughs> yeah. know, you're carrying a miracle. And we know we, the first miracle that I talk about in the book is the miracle of creation and that we're made in God's image and that mm -hmm. he gave us life. So such a beautiful miracle. But let's talk about today's miracle passage, because this is a story of Joshua and he's leading the Israelites around this fortified city. Mm -hmm. Now, God said, take the city. Right. Now, I want to stop right here because when God says to do something mm -hmm. and he tells you to do it and he's going to give it to you, you have to hold on to that. That's the miracle. Even though you don't see walls falling down mm -hmm. and these, you know, the people were looking at him like, you're crazy. You think marching around our fortified city is going to make the walls fall down? Right. So let's talk about this. How do you think you would have felt if you were the Israelites and you're walking around and Joshua said the walls are going to fall down because God told me so? Right. How would you feel? I would. I wish I could say I 100% know I'd be full of faith and I just know that I, my spirits would be high the whole time. But I think, you know, after you walk around two times, three times, four times, even though he said seven times, you're not seeing a little brick fall here mm -hmm. and a little signs that right. the wall is going to fall down. Mm -hmm. The wall has it stayed intact as a wall. There doesn't seem to be any change until after that seventh time. Mm -hmm. And I know in our humanity, you're like, Lord, can you just throw me a bone? Like, just have a couple of the bricks fall down so right. I know that what we're doing is actually making an impact. Mm -hmm. um, but then that's not faith. And that's my point. Don't you believe that God tested their faith? Totally. And it wasn't until he said it would be on the seventh day and then mm -hmm. seven times around. And I really believe that what God wants to do, you say, well, is he toying with them? Is he testing them? I mean, mm -hmm. why would a God do that? Yeah. because he's strengthening their faith right. because they would need more faith for the battles to come yeah. and so often i think what happens is we have what i call easy believism mm -hmm. and we want everything so quick and so easy and we can't grow our faith without challenges yeah and without exercising our faith yeah so let's talk a little bit can you think of a time in your life where you just had to trust god and you you knew he would come through, but he didn't seem to be coming through quick enough. And you had to push through because you're a prayer warrior. I watch mm -hmm. you pray and you had to persevere and you had to push through and you had to wait similar mm -hmm. to what we see in the story. Yeah. I mean, my dad, I, that's yeah. the first right. thing that comes mm -hmm. to my mind. Um, last year, my, my wedding was on September 17th and on August 6th, I believe my dad um, got COVID and he was already, you know, struggling uh, in remission from cancer um, and the cancer had come back. So anyways, you know, he ended mm -hmm. up back in the hospital yeah. and we thought he'd be in the hospital for three or four days, but none of nothing was working. And I knew that the Lord had given me a word that my dad would walk me down the aisle, mm -hmm. that he would be at my wedding. Mm -hmm. Um, and I had just hung on to that word that he is going to walk me down the aisle. So even though, okay, now it's August 10th, now it's August 12th. Okay. Now it's August 17th. It was exactly a month before my wedding. And the hospitalist and the social worker brought me and my mom in. 
That was the day mm -hmm. I was here in mm -hmm. front of this building. That's a miracle building. And they pretty much said, you should consider postponing your wedding. Mm -hmm. um, and we need to talk about next steps because nothing's working on your dad. And basically the ventilator is the next step but there's not really a point in the ventilator if we're not seeing any improvement. Pretty much saying they thought he would probably pass by the end of the week. Yeah. Um, and it was one of those like, okay, God, you're not showing us any signs of progress at all. Mm -hmm. In fact, everything's getting worse. Um, but I mean, thank God I'm surrounded by faith-filled people. Mm -hmm. And I just remember being outside of this building at Influence Church and st you asked me, mm -hmm. is everything okay? And I go, no, they mm -hmm. just called. This is not looking good. And we prayed and it was just like a travailing, mm -hmm. like yeah. if you don't come through God, like you, you have to, yeah. there is no other, there is yeah. no plan B. Mm -hmm. There is no other option. Mm -hmm. You have to. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the first time in my life where I felt that, you know, there is no plan B. Yeah. You know, we were contending. Mm -hmm. We were contending. And that's why I think marching around this these walls for seven days they were contending with their god totally god was growing them up he was preparing them yeah we contended with with you mm -hmm. we came to our god the miracle working god Amen. and the reason that these two stories are parallel because listen guys when you read the word of god it's not just a historical story god's trying to teach you patterns and precepts from the word of god that are applicable to you today so Amen. what is what is your fortified city that you have to walk around and contend with and believe for melody and for our staff we believed that your father would be healed, that Amen. your father would walk you down that aisle. And you know what you just said that is so good? There was not a plan B. Right. If there's a plan B, there's no faith. Right. <laughs> there's a plan A, it's what we're asking you for, God. Totally. And so the story goes on. Yeah, the story goes on. Everything's looking really bad. And then um, basically overnight, there was a turnaround. His body all of a sudden started responding to all of the medicine and, um, it was pretty amazing. There's this um, awesome songwriter that I know named Jonas Myron. He wrote that song, the bless the Lord, oh my soul. Such a great writer. And he reached out to me. It was that Thursday. And he goes, Melody, the Lord put your dad on my heart tonight. And he had me cancel my dinner plans to write a song for him. Mm -hmm. And it's called Beautiful Breakthrough. And he wrote this song for my dad. And I connected him and my dad on WhatsApp. And my dad could just like barely text. He was all full of tubes. And my dad just listened to that song all night mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know what? He, he will run and not grow weary. Amen. Like he will get through this. And yeah, that's pretty much what happened. The nurse FaceTimed me the next morning after he got that song about 1030 at night, the nurse FaceTimed us about 10 AM the next morning and he was crying. Mm. And my dad was like, Mia, like I'm feeling so much better. Mm -hmm. His oxygen, they had him at that point at like 89% oxygen, mm -hmm. meaning he, could, he couldn't even breathe on his breathe own. On his own. Mm -hmm. And they were able to lower it all the way down to a nasal cannula that was 4%, mm -hmm. which it's like, if you're, you can be on that at home. Yeah. Um, so he was able to walk me down the aisle. Um, yeah, I went down these big long steps which and then he so met beautiful. me there and we walked together and it was a total victory and slap in the devil's face. And it was a miracle story. And that's what we're talking about here. Yeah. We want you to believe in miracles. We want you to know that God has a manifestation of miracles. Amen. He doesn't want you to have thank you, a plan B. He mm -hmm. wants you to stay strong, just like this fortified city fell down when they were obedient to march for six days and on the seventh day, seven times, and God gave them, the Bible says, the city. Yeah. He gave them the city, and he wants to give you your miracle. And you know, Melody, in, in the book, I have these beautiful stories of miracles, but then we also have fasting focuses. So yeah. every day you have a fasting focus because we are fasting for our miracle. Mm -hmm. Remember, you've heard me say over and over, some things only happen, Jesus said, by prayer and fasting. So mm -hmm. the combination of your prayer life and your fast, which is your offering to God, can bring breakthrough. Amen. And so the story that we're looking at today is actually the story of Esther. Mm -hmm. And we're fasting today for favor. And I believe you had favor when God gave you that beautiful 
gift of your father. He did walk you down. We watched that. Pastor Phil and I were there. (laughs) It was beautiful. But, you know, for Esther, she had to like you. She had to believe. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were getting ready to wipe out the Jews. They were getting ready to destroy because of an evil man, Mm -hmm. you know, Haman, who we know, an evil man, but a praying uncle, Mordecai, Mm -hmm. who would not bend or bow he would not succumb to the enemy. Yeah. And Esther, we all talk about this for such a time as this. Mm-hmm. Remember when he said, Esther, you may be in the throne for such a time as this. Yeah. Your appointment by God was not just because you were a beautiful woman. Right. You weren't just selected because the king looked at you and goes, oh, she's hot. Right. Let's take that one. <laughs> yeah. You were selected by the hand of God for such a time as this. Mm-hmm. And that's what we're fav- just today, favor. I want you to fast for favor in your life. Yeah. Fast for favor. Speak it over you. Believe it. Ask God. So if I ask you right now, and this is just very, we're just talking, <laughs> so I didn't ask you these questions before. <laughs> if you were asking for favor right now in your mm-hmm. life, what would it be you're asking God for favor for? Oh, my gosh. I honestly my labor and delivery Mm -hmm. I want favor yeah (laughs) you know you hear all these traumatic birth stories and horror stories of people you know going through their labor and delivery and I'm just asking the Lord for favor on that whole day that it would just be a miracle relaxed no emergency anything (laughs) just share what you shared Sunday at church I thought it was so good about entering into that rest I thought that was so good yeah I'm listening to this um, like Christian affirmation app on all focused around labor and delivery and what she was um, explaining was how you're if you fear then you tense up and your body's not able to do what it's designed to do Mm -hmm. and how important it is to stay in not your fight or flight to stay relaxed. Mm. And I felt like the Lord was showing me in that moment and kind of corrected me like, you know, Melody, when you're believing for your breakthrough, you feel like you have to put like push so hard for it and it needs to be this and try, try, try. And he's like, but really spiritually, you have to be in a posture of rest because you just know that mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. that I'm faithful and yeah. that I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, So yeah, I think that's so beautiful. So I want to say to you right now, whatever you're going through, whoever you're you're listening now again, whether it's on YouTube or our podcast, every one of us needs some type of breakthrough in our life. Yeah. You know, we just need something. So in today's passage, as you're fasting for favor and you're believing God to knock down the walls, you're walking around those obstacles that seem to be keeping you from the entrance into the city. There's something God has for you. I want you to begin, just as Melody said, just rest. Selah. Yes. Pause and rest and see what God's doing, right? I want you to believe that in your life right now. God has good for you. God yeah. desires miracles for you, but you've got to pray and fast and believe and push through and persevere and not give up. Yeah. So I just want to encourage you right now through this 21 day fast, stay the course, believe God has good for you prophetically speak it out right yeah i mean prophetically say it so that's what faith is yes and know that god has miracles for you what would you want to say in our last moment together oh my gosh don't give up do not grow weary in doing good and i think know that there's a line from this song that we have called by your spirit and it says the only fight that you've called me to is to keep faith alive and i think that's our greatest fight is to keep the faith that god will do your miracle Okay, and um, I just want to put in a shameless plug because I love influence music. Uh, We have a minute or so left. Take a couple moments now and just tell them a little bit about influence music and just how we got started and where they can find us and maybe even one of your favorite songs as a writer (laughs) and um, all that you do here with influence music. Totally. So influence music is the music ministry out of here, Influence Church, and it started with you and Phil just believing in music Mm. and entertainment and media. Um, So I came on staff here in 2017, January 2017, which is crazy. Um, But yeah, so we started writing original music and releasing it and the Lord totally breathed on it. Our first album like went billboard number one. And it's so insane Mm -hmm. just that God has given our music ministry a global platform when we're really we're a small church in Anaheim Hills comparatively to these other big music movements. So um, yeah, so our latest album is actually called Before the Breakthrough, which may coincide with this. If you're believing for your Mm -hmm. breakthrough, Mm -hmm. um, you can look up the album Before the Breakthrough. And I think 
my favorite song right now from that record, Kim Walker Smith is singing it and it's called By Your Spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, and that song is super special to me because it's the only song where I wrote all the lyrics. Mm -hmm. And usually we co-write in a team of three or four, but that song I felt was just the Lord like um, speaking to me about this not striving mm -hmm. and trusting. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. Where can they find it? <laughs> um, anywhere you listen to music, Spotify, Pandora, YouTube, Apple, anywhere you listen to music, just put in influence music by your spirit and you'll find it. Well, you guys, thanks so much for being here. Melody, thank you. I think we're going to have you come back to the studio. We'll talk a yeah. little bit more about fasting and prayer. And again, believe God for your breakthrough before the breakthrough. Exercise your faith. Know that God has a manifestation of miracles for you. Thank you guys so much. And if you're watching us right now on a YouTube channel, if you would just go down and click that bell and receive notifications of our next um, YouTube video, you'll love that. And for those of you that are watching us um, or listening to us, excuse me, on our podcast, thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. Uh, we'll be back soon. Have a great day. God bless.